Hey, how y'all doing today? This is Josh from Keep It Techie, and today I want to do a quick video on the program G Ported. So let's get to the video. So what is Gported? Gported is one of the most popular partitioning tools on Linux. Um, and the reason it's so popular is because it's a GUI tool. Uh, it's very easy to use, uh, very powerful, easy to navigate, but it's a GUI tool. Most of the other partitioning programs are command line based, and that's kind of intimidating for new users. That's why I want to uh, introduce Gported to you guys so you can understand how to do it. Um, and this tool really comes in handy, especially when you're doing uh, dual boots or setting up dual boots. Even though I don't recommend uh, dual booting your operating system, especially with uh, critical files that you have, uh, just make sure you have backups of it. But if you do do it, this program will allow you to do it, uh, no problem. So let's go to that website, it's gported.org. And I just want to talk about, uh, just show you the website. Uh, and basically says uh, Gport is a free partitioning editor for graphically managing your disk partitions. Um, you can resize, copy, move partitions without data loss, enabling you to grow or shrink your C drive, uh, create space for new operating systems, uh, attempt data rescue for lost partitions. And here are the features. It's pretty much the same as what's above. Create, delete, resize, move. You can check. Um, you can change the labels, you can set new UUIDs, you can copy and paste, as well as um, these are the file systems that you can manipulate. Uh, the main ones are EXT4, FAT32, um, NTFS, so it has a slew of file systems you can manipulate. So it's a good thing. Um, Gporter can be used on x86 and x86-64 based computers running Linux, Windows, Mac, OS X by booting on the live disk. So let's show you that uh, first. Um, so live disk. This is basically the instructions on how to do it, uh, on how to actually install or create your live disk. Um, Here's the live USB instructions, and this is a link to the download page, actually, uh, so you can download the ISO. Uh, and it's just some other information, instructions, good in, good information to check out, uh, just to help you out, um, and just some more information on it, uh, the programs and the command line utilities that are built into it. So. First thing you want to do when you want to use this is to download it, obviously download the ISO so you can go in, download the ISO uh, and install it to a USB or whatever. And I'm going to go through and show you the two ways um, you can use this. Um, we're going to I'm going to set it up where you will use the live ISO because you can't manipulate or you can't change uh, the partitions that are mounted like uh, for instance, uh, if you log into your operating system, you can't you can't make changes to the to the partition uh, that's booted up. Um, so I'll show you the two ways. And then let's see. Here are the instructions, install instructions. If if you want to install it directly to your uh, operating system, and that'll allow you to manipulate uh, that like USB drives that you plug in or any any external media that you plug into it you can as far as drives go you can uh, manipulate uh, using the installate installed version on your version of Linux uh, that you have so good to go on that so let's go on and go down to my VM which I have set up and I'll just show you the settings right fast um, and basically what I did was um, this was my Ubuntu install. It's a 40 gigabit uh, virtual disk. And I already went in, booted up on a live disk, and went through and shrunk the drive using the uh, live CD. And I was gonna include that in the video, but it's it takes a little while when you're doing the shrinking. I forgot how long it takes, so um, I just wanted to go on and do it. 
Um, so anyway, this drive, I basically cut it in half. Uh, I dropped down the uh, main, I shrunk down the main partition to uh, like 19 gigabytes and the remaining I left unallocated so we can um, partition it using Gport it on the live disk. So we're good to go. And then also I created uh, another virtual disk, just 10 gigabytes. And uh, I'll just show you how to do it using the operating system. So um, let's go down and start this thing up. So it'll automatically recognize the ISO or the depending on your bio settings, it'll it'll recognize the USB. If if it doesn't, you may have to go into your BIOS and activate USB boot boot or make changes to the BIOS to get this thing to show up or go into your, your boot menu and select the USB. So um, just click uh, G port it live. Press enter. I meant. And this will boot up. And just to talk a little bit about it, it's basically a Debian uh, live CD. It's, it's a Debian based OS on the drive. I mean, on the uh, live USB. And so let's see. This says, don't touch key map. This is, I believe this has to do with your keyboard and mouse. So good to go. And then you want to select your language. And I always use X, which is fine. So that's zero. All right. And like I said, it's a small Debian operating system and it'll automatically pull up to port as soon as it boots up. So uh, it has a few little things on here. It has screenshots, terminal. You can change the resolution if you want to. It has a little cheap web browser in there. I don't even know what that is, but, uh, and then, uh, network configurations if you want to go in and and uh, network this little thing um, so like I said it automatically opens it up so let me maximize it a little bit there we go so let me start with the menu uh, G ported under the G ported uh, tab there's refresh devices so if you plug in like a USB or another um, drive you can hit refresh and it'll sh it'll uh, search your system for any new drives and it'll add it to this list. So um, edit. This is once we start making changes, you can go in and undo last operations, uh, clear operations, um, apply all operations. And that's once we start making changes to it, because with Gport, it, it doesn't make the change right away. Uh, it may it only makes the change once you hit apply so uh, let's see device information I don't know why this is not turned on by default but it's a good thing to see uh, you can see information about the drive so I mean it tells you what it is um, you know the model all this serial number size the path to it uh, and the partition tables so and just some good information you can check out and also the pending operations I like to have that open as well I don't know why it doesn't open that up by default but hey it is what it is um, so device this is where you can go in and create the partitions or you can actually just click here new and it'll pop up saying create partition uh, this is where you go in and try to recover a partition if something got messed up it got corrupted or whatever uh, you can attempt a data rescue so that's a good thing built into it and same thing you can go ahead and hit new partition this is the help menu you can go to probably link to their website or something but in the manual so good to go on that so um like i said i already shrunk my partition and just to show you how that works we could just right click on it hit resize and then just shrink it down or you can actually type in the megabytes if you want to uh, so I'm gonna hit cancel on that but that's how I, I shrunk it now I just re hit resize and like I said it took about 20 minutes or so and this is a VM I don't really really want to you know bog down my system too bad using with this VM especially while I'm trying to record so uh, I'm not gonna do it uh, right now 
So, um, but I will do uh, partition this unallocated space that's left over. So, uh, you just right click on it, hit new. And it is a partition. You know, I want to make it ext4. Uh, and let's just name it uh, extend extension extension uh, hit add and then like I said it doesn't actually make changes to the drive itself until you hit the apply button so let's just hit apply it's another warning basically saying that you will lose data which is fine uh, we know we have the right drive selected so let's just click apply and we'll go through the process and it shouldn't take long when you're creating partition it just goes through and create it uh, yeah like I said it, it only took a little over one second so it'll refresh your drives and let you know that you have a partition there now so the next thing we want to do is um, see I can manipulate that other drive right now but I want to show you how to do it in um, in your operating system so we're not going to touch that one so we can go down and close this we've done all the manipulation we're going to do from the live CD and then we're I want to boot up uh, the uh, operating system so press ok press enter cool so now I want to boot up Ubuntu, show you how to install Gport it, and run Gport it against that 10 gigabyte drive. So let's give it a second to boot up. Okay, now we got this thing back up. So let's log in on Ubuntu. All right, and I'm gonna show you how to install it. So you basically just go to your package manager or applications manager. They call it Ubuntu software center on Ubuntu. Uh, just go up to the search. If there is a search and uh, type uh, Gport it. I'm sorry, Gport it. And it'll bring up that operating, I mean that program. And you just click install. But I like to show you guys how to do things in the command line. So. Let's open up the command line and run it that way. Got to stay sharp on your skills, so might as well do it. So sudo apt install gport it and press enter and it'll ask for your password. Press enter and it'll install that application for you as well as the uh, dependencies for it. And you're good to go. So now the program is actually installed. Um, so let's go down and find it and open it up. Manipulate that drive. So there it is. Gport it. This program always asks you to run as root because I, I think it's kind of like another um, warning to you. I look at it that way. Uh, because it's basically letting you know you can uh, mess up your file system with this with this program. That's why it has to run as root. So anyway, this is the drive that we changed in under the live disk. So we want to find the 10 gigabyte drive. And just to show you an example, you can't you can't change the you shouldn't be able to resize it. Uh, you can only make it bigger. But you can't make it smaller uh, when you when you're booting in that operating system it's basically mounted so you can't do anything with it um, but anyway here's the 10 10 gigabyte drive so I'm gonna do this exact same thing just hit new uh, partition ext4 and I'll just name that my backup drive because we want to look at this drive as like an external we just plugged in and we can set this one up for NTFS just for for um, chits and giggles, basically. Uh, so just hit add. It'll add it to the operations. And 
then you can just hit the check mark and it will go through and yeah, it'll ask you are you sure basically hit apply and it'll go through and partition a drive for you so good to go if you guys enjoyed the video please like share and subscribe um that's it for this one um i appreciate you guys watching the video uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Make sure you guys look out for my new videos that will be coming out. Of course, keep it techy.